So it's 2023 and Marvel has officially kicked off their phase five of their cinematic universe with Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania. And this is a movie that is kind of a mixed package. It became really controversial for a lot of reasons, but also really loved for other reasons. And today I'm going to dissect this thing and give my opinion on what I thought it was one of Marvel's most creative films, but also a film that had a kind of some lackluster things with its overall overarching elements that are trying to build until the next two Avengers movies. So without further ado, let's get into this film and say some of the things that I enjoyed, some of the things that I didn't, and also what I wish to see in the future of Marvel's universe and also the Kang saga, which begins in this movie, and also his character, because I feel like Jonathan Majors as Kang is a character that I hope to see more of in future films, but I feel like this movie did him dirty in some ways. So first, let's go over some context for the movie. So this is the third Ant-Man film. It's directed also by Peyton Reed, who also got in, was in charge of the previous two movies. And this one is very different from those two because while well, those had like more of human elements of Ant-Man in it and the Wasp, and also played with those kind of like more, you know, heist stories. This one takes a completely different direction and goes full sci-fi action, adventure, kind of similar to Guardians of the Galaxy, Thor Love and Thunder. But this movie takes a different approach in the quantum realm. It explores a new realm of the Marvel Universe that we have only seen in the little snippets in the previous Sandman movie, Ant-Man and the Wasp. But this one goes full on adventure in the quantum realm. And that works for its benefit and also its detriment. But for me personally, I thought that this was one of the most creative and fun uh, realms in the Marvel Universe. I, I feel like this is a movie that sets a lot of things that I love to see more in the future, especially the concept of the film, that it's like this is set apart in a uh, realm different from time and space and the multiverse that the MCU starting to explore. But it also has a lot of confusing things. It has a lot of things that might not be like the best for general audiences. But for Marvel fans, I feel like it's going to provide like sort of a like a base for phase five or the whole multiverse thing they're trying to build up in the phase five and phase six of the Marvel universe. And that goes directly into Kang. And for the detriment of the movie, I feel like the setting has a lot of just completely CGI green screen uh, settings that work in some ways, but also most of the time it felt kind of janky, the CGI, like in some scenes it looks really good. And in others, it looks like really like a really bad, uh, green screen. And also with a specific character that I'll mention later, it looks just strange. But in the film, in the ways that it does feel like look good, I feel like it shines in the ways that it didn't and didn't. And now we're going to go into the plot. So basically, so what happens in this movie is we follow the characters from the previous Ant-Man and the Wasp movies. So we got Scott Lang, we got Hope Man Dine as the main two characters, but we also get Cassie, who is Scott's daughter, and Janet and Hank, who get all pulled up into the quantum realm. So what they want to do is try to escape. And during the way they encounter a character that is supposed to be really awesome, but I feel like he really uh, didn't shine in many ways. So this character is Kang, better known as Kang the Conqueror, which any comic fan knows that is a really formidable force, a really strong character, which according to the Marvel um, social media is on par with Thanos. But in reality, I feel like Ant-Man and the Wasp didn't really let him shine in the ways I hoped for. I feel like the character is set up to be like the next big bad of the, you know, the multiverse saga on the MCU. But I'm going to go into light spoilers. In this movie, I feel like he was just like this evil character that was evil for no reason. And I hope that Loki season two goes into more of the multiverse uh, shenanigans that are going on behind the scenes with all the different Kangs that are shown in the post credit scenes. But in this movie, I feel like it didn't really shine. It was just like this evil character who gets like beat up by Ant-Man and basically is defeated in super fast time by one of the, like the most, uh, you know, unremarkable Avengers. You know, I thought I thought like the whole setup, like setting him to be this evil bad guy, I just didn't think worked really well. It didn't really make me fear him in a lot of ways. I feel like, uh, like don't get me wrong, I feel like Jonathan Majors' performance was great. There were some scenes where he really you really kind of are afraid of him like you're like oh this guy is really evil and he has like these really strong powers but at the time of fighting I, and like commanding his army commanding everything i feel like it really he really lacked in a lot of that department and that is something that i hope like gets uh fixed in avengers 5 and 6 and also in the loki season 2 uh movie and other marvel movies but for now i feel like kang didn't really shine in the way that many people hope for I feel like many people's main problem with the movie is the writing, the way they like basically explain explain a lot of things through, oh, it's the quantum realm, crazy stuff happens down here, and yeah, things get resolved, and that's it. And I don't know, like a lot of the things just didn't really work for me and in the writing department. 
and it was an entertaining movie but i feel like the writers really need to put more effort into why things happen there's like a whole scene where ants like evolve super rapidly and that becomes like a plot element where these like super intelligent ants uh like dominate this character but it's just explained in such a weird way that it feels kind of like a rick and morty episode where things just happen for a reason and in rick and morty would work but here's like oh okay i guess that happened so yeah what are you gonna do about it so yeah a lot of things happen like this like throughout the movie uh from the very beginning where the five members of the lang of undying pym family get sucked into the quantum realm they try to find their way to escape so they get separated so scott and cassie go a certain way and then jane hope and hank go a separate other way and over the course of the movie they meet really crazy fun characters and i gotta say i love these characters i love the design of the the quantum realm like i, I thought that was my favorite part of the movie and it made for some really fun scenes from some really fun characters with interesting quirks and i feel like it, the quantum realm really had the best of it like explored and that's something i really appreciate about the movie if the writing was better i thought it would be much better and also we get another character which is modok and as many marvel fans also know Modok is like this character who there's no possible way to portray him as a serious character. That's something I want to get right off the bat because uh, Modok is just looks ridiculous in this movie. Seriously, it looks like Humpty Dumpty and Mr. Electra from Sharkboy and Lava Girl had sex and had a baby. Like it just looks awful to see like this large face, bald and large, horrible creature. But I feel like it was just like it, it just worked. I, I thought of Modok was really entertaining in this movie. I feel like Darren Cross turned into this creature uh, provided some comedic relief like, like i said before there's no serious way to portray this character and every time he appeared in screen i was just laughing and i feel like it provided a way for the movie to be a, bit, a little bit lighter like not take itself too seriously um but i feel like it like he was just a supplementary character i think he's supposed to be a bigger deal in the comics so i hope he somehow comes back another way i didn't like that he died because you know he was entertaining in that sense but in, like in the end of in the movie doesn't really focus on modok too much it focuses more on the battle with between Scott and like the way they interact with Kang. So yeah, now back to Kang with uh, discussing the plot. I feel well, like during the movie after that, Scott and like the Pym family go and face this tyrant who is like uh, destroying everything in the quantum realm. He's like establishing a fascist empire to control everybody. And they try to defeat him because he's using his, he's trying to use his powers to like escape the quantum realm wreak havoc on the multiverse and basically become this like evil conqueror i gotta say like i think it's important to show his powers and like the way he can be very ruthless and i feel like that was done good in the beginning but yeah over the course of the movie they have like this like it, it all leads up to this really big battle where you know the good guys rebel against them and you know it's pretty standard marvel stuff you know the bad guy i mean the good guys go against the bad guys and honestly i thought this movie would have a, an ending like similar to infinity war where the good guys are about to win and then suddenly they lose and then you realize oh shit this is actually a really uh evil and powerful character but that doesn't happen in the movie i thought that would have been a really good great way to set up kang i thought if he would have won in this movie like basically like maybe escape the quantum realm i feel like it like the movie would have made sense i feel like it would that would have been like a really i don't know like there's this final battle where he's beating up scott then hope uh comes out and then what happens is they both they like basically beat him up with their fists like it's just really standard stuff basically the most powerful enemy in the universe gets beat up by ant-man and the wasp and then he is sucked into this machine like doesn't make any sense like is does he get sucked into the quantum quantum realm like i don't know, I don't know. it's like it doesn't make any sense that he gets sucked deeper into the machine and basically goes into oblivion that pretty much means like we're gonna see him later but it still doesn't make sense like he just gets beat up that easily i i, I just didn't like that ending so in the end yeah the good guys win the bad guys lose and the day is saved and that's i thought it was my biggest problem with the movie is how easily everything got resolved and it just i don't know i feel like we didn't learn much about kang we didn't like get to see his like full powers in action and that's it's a really bad precedent for the rest of the mcu phase five again i hope that loki season two and avengers uh five and six really fix that problem but for now i like he's not a character that really intimidated even though Jonathan Majors get an amazing gave an amazing performance where he is shown to be this like ruthless, determined character to become this like conqueror figure. But yeah, anyways, I, I liked a lot of the aspects of this movie. I feel like it's a movie that is entertaining at first if you see it as a standalone movie, which a lot of people, like general audiences, will not see it. Like I think people, the average person will not be interested in seeing Ammon and the Wasp Quantumania. But if you're a Marvel fan who's interested in see how Kang ties to the rest of the MCU, 
Oh, Scott and Lang. Uh, actually, well, actually, I guess these characters are really good. I feel like Scott and Hope and Hank really show their revolution as characters at the end of this trilogy. But yeah, as a standalone movie, it's pretty good. It was I, I found myself very entertained. Um, but as an overall, you know, piece of the arc overarching story, I feel like it had a lot of issues. But yeah, so anyways, I think I'm gonna give Ant Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania a 75 out of 100. I would have given it much higher, but I feel like those aspects like lower the score a lot. A lot. So yeah, anyways, those are pretty much all my thoughts. I hope my mind gets changed. When Loki Season 2 comes out, I'll definitely review it. Um, but for now, I feel like this series, I mean, this movie left a lot to think in very negative ways. But yeah, anyways, I, I liked it. It was fun, but it had some major issues. But anyways, those are pretty much all my thoughts on Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. So I'll see you guys later and like and subscribe and all that.